It's all it's right all to right. be just a little bit crazy. Being, being creative, creative is being a little bit crazy in just the right vibration. With that, With that in mind, mind, you should understand, should understand God's, God's completely God's insane. insane. <laughs>
have been often just the conversations that I would have with Dave. You know, I'd be sitting there on the phone crying, feeling extremely powerless and, and just completely out of control in my own life, you know, crying, being in pain, um, just feeling attacked by the world around me. And it would be the subtle shifts in perspective that he would give me that would show me, hey, you know, you have a choice right now. How do you want to perceive this? How, how do you want to interact with this in your life? And uh, that those questions have been the most fundamental, I think, just asking myself those questions yes. because they gave me the power back. The personal power. Makes sense. Which mm -hmm. uh, everyone has, uh, do they not? No matter how bad the situation, yeah. you, uh, the situation is correctable from within. I think too many people at times um, are looking for external sources to fix things uh, when a lot of the answers are, are within. That's very true. And they also assign a lot of blame onto the external. It's like, oh, it's his fault that I feel this way. Oh, it's, it's her fault that I feel like this, she's making me feel this way, or they are making me feel this way, like the Illuminati, they're making me feel this way, you know, and people get into a rut mentally, and uh, what I see happening with so many people who are in the awakening movement is that it's almost like they need to awaken from their awakening, because they, when they yeah. awaken, it's like they're, they're blaming everybody out there, but the real true awakening is taking ownership of the stuff that's going on inside of you and, and really empowering yourself to get to a place of mastery and not allowing the world to rattle you and mm. to throw you off so much. Yes, the world of illusion as such. Yeah, well, what, one exactly. of the things that, uh, I've come across as... Um, although it's, uh, it's improving as such, is uh, personal responsibility. And um, mm -hmm. we, we're primarily um, about uh, freedom and removing the cabal and, and all these banking families and the elites. And we used to have an ET show. We just had an ET show. And mm -hmm. um, one of the things I used to say um, when I, before I did the radio show was, it's each and everyone's fault we're in this mess. Uh, because yeah. uh, too many times to you'll go, no, it's the bankers. Uh, well, yes, it is. But why, why have each and every one of us allowed it to happen? And um, I'd like you to perhaps talk a bit about personal responsibility, in, uh, if you could. Yes, of course. Well, so many people who care about changing the world and they want to do something... Uh, like in it, like, you know, they want to wake up the world, you know, they go out there with these really good intentions. But they're basically working with a ball and chain around their leg. Uh, and this ball and chain is their feelings of insecurity and fear and unprocessed grief and hurts from the past. And all of that is just really making their life in the current moment like 10 times harder than it really needs to be. And, you know, when I say this, it's it's not to say that this is like new agey spirituality. I mean, this is about plugging the leaks in your own integrity with yourself to allow yourself to not be distracted by the suffering in your own personal life so you can go out and actually go into the world and make a difference because when you heal yourself, you're so much more able to show up and heal the world. Uh, you know, people, people notice that things are different about you when you do this. And, and when you're taking responsibility for your life, you're more clear-minded, more reliable. Uh, you're less petty and irrational, and you're less reactive, and you, you stop uh, allowing yourself to be so... Uh, you, you know that, like when people are just erupting all over the place. You know, they're just yes. Yeah, there's lots of people erupting at the and, moment. Yeah. Uh, so when you own your own shortcomings and insecurities, the world isn't really able to push your buttons so much. And instead of drowning in that victimization and the woe is me, uh, you're more buoyant and resilient. And those are extremely important qualities to have when you're wanting to make a difference in the world. Uh, you know, Dave and I, we would joke that uh, 
my, my dark shadow aspect is, you know, ogrena. You know, I have this, <laughs> this ogre that lives inside of me. But, you know, when I was rejecting it and pushing it away and really uh, disowning it, it wreaked havoc on my life, you know, because I would have these long spells of depression that just wouldn't lift. It was because I was in such resistance to myself and I was shunning it and, you know, it would come back full force by, you know, making me ill or, you know, giving me like a zit the size of Jupiter or, you know, making me get three beast things in one day or, you know, like just crazy things. But they had to do with the fact that I wasn't taking responsibility for my emotions and, and who I am. And I was shunning myself. Yes. So, so one of the biggest things that I can tell people is to, to really play with your shadow sides. You don't have to sh- push it away and you don't have to reject the negative parts of you. But when you start bringing them into the light, and bringing them into your awareness, you are able to dispel them, if that makes sense. Like, they're, they're power lessons. Yes. Yes. So, uh, in essence, are you aware of, like, the, the mirroring effect of what, basically, what you're putting out, you're getting back? Yeah, what... and, you know, a lot of people talk about that, but it's just like... I, I wonder how many people really understand how it's happening all the time. You know, yeah. Dave says that the, the quantum mirror doesn't take coffee breaks. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, I agree. So, yeah. is the first step on this, this road um, self-discovery and then um, finding the inner, inner demons, how, how deep it goes and... Uh, where would you like to go with that? Well, I know that a, pe- a lot of people that are on your show uh, really are are in the audience of, you know, listening to what's happening with the banksters and the Illuminati and all of that stuff. And I really wanted to address that for a moment uh, yeah. because we all know that the world is going to hell in a handbasket, so to speak. <laughs> but um, yes. Yeah. You know, part of personal empowerment is seeing that stuff, you know, and not shunning it. And then just allowing yourself to feel the feelings that arise and then understand that these feelings exist within you and because they're being triggered in you. And when you overcome those feelings and fears by questioning your thinking and your beliefs, the whole world opens up to you and you're not any longer shackled by your fear. And that's a really important thing to point out is that a lot of these uh, shadows, parts of our our psyche, are repressed fear and anger and sadness. And, you know, that's why people act so belligerently sometimes. It's just because they're afraid. Yeah. So. Hide and insecurities. Yeah, yeah. And so, I mean, I just, I kind of chuckle to myself sometimes when I see people who, but for okay, so for instance, I live in I live in Costa Rica, and there's a lot of expatriates that live down here, and a lot of them are people who are running from something in the United States. They're thinking the whole world's going to collapse. You know, the banksters are out to get us. The Illuminati, this, 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 that, and the other thing. You know, they're just they're running. And there's one person in particular who. He listens to Alex Jones about six hours a day. And, you know, he's probably one of the most belligerent and, and just harsh people that I've ever come across. Yeah, I and can tolerate about it, six seconds of Alex Yeah. Jones. <laughs> it's like yeah. somebody scratching the so, nails down a chalkboard. No. Right. And so it's, it's people like this who are out there who are wanting to, you know, make a difference in the world by, like, scaring people awake or or frightening people into their empowerment. And it just doesn't work that way, you know? So, (laughs) no. (laughs) And so this person, you know, he walks around and and tells everybody that they're ignorant, asleep sheep. And, you know, he is not very well liked in the neighborhood at all. And he kind of just achieves the opposite. So I I just wanted to put that out there. (laughs) Um, First of all, like, 
there's just a completely different approach to empowerment that I'm speaking about. And it yes. doesn't actually fall in the category of being new agey, and it doesn't fall in the category of being, you know, the world's falling, Illuminati, banksters, blah, 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 you know, yeah. Alex Jones camp. Yeah. This is a middle path, <laughs> one of awareness and, and just about ownership that transcends all that other stuff. So. Yeah. Do you often find that... Um, I was that uh, uh, was a good story about uh, the difference between the people who are awake and who are asleep. Um, um, mm-hmm. It's it's true uh, to an extent, uh, but from my understanding, thirty uh, percent of the population are designed were previously designed not to get it. So those thirty percent doesn't matter what you tell them; they're, they're not going to accept the information given. Now, the difference, uh-huh. uh, what uh, I and a lot of others experience um, is the what I call the protective bubble they put around themselves. Like, this is not happening to me. And, uh, you know, the vaccines and all the other stuff that's going on. Uh, no, that's not happening mm-hmm. because it's not happening in my sphere. And, again, that's mm-hmm. um, lacking personal responsibility. Uh, until uh, then they find that suddenly their sphere or bubble of protection that they put around them uh, has been popped by one of their grandchildren's being vaccinated and they, they've suffered autism or whatever else. And then suddenly they're screaming, mm-hmm. uh, why isn't this being stopped? Why isn't this being helped? And, uh, you know, it's, uh, again, it's, uh, it's personal responsibility. Um, I can understand that guy's frustration. Yes, he will be unpopular because you're basically teaching people a truth that is outstanding, uh, outside of their understanding, so to speak. Is that something you come across in your um, sessions as such? Mm-hmm. You know, it's, um, it's rather difficult. Yeah. <laughs> Just in, in my daily life, too... Um, you know, I, I I live around a very wide variety of people, uh, and you know, you learn discernment amongst like what you share with people. You know, I, I'm sure you've learned that too. Yes. Right. Uh, you you have to understand and feel people out for their level of readiness, and you don't really want to let all the, your all of your information out of the bag because you know, it's just, it's not worth your time or effort or any energy. I mean, I, I I came across a gentleman the other day. uh, He came up to my house and he was purchasing something off of Craigslist from my husband. And, you know, within the first five minutes, I was hearing about his fibromyalgia and, you know, how miserable he is. And, you know, he was carrying an envelope to pay my husband for the item with, and he had about thirty thousand dollars worth. He had thirty thousand dollars in the denomination colones uh, in his bag, and he did not trust banks. You know, so I, I was sitting there listening to this gentleman, and you know, listening to him complaining about his pain, and you know, my husband made the mistake of opening up and saying, "Oh, yeah, my wife, she had fibromyalgia, and she got over it." You know, and he just like looked at me, and he gave me. The, the meanest glare he was just like well men have it worse and you know and he was just so uh so clinging to his 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 uh disease and his his beliefs and his view of the world and he completely shunned anything else outside of that you know the fact that i suffered for two years and was able to move past that disease mm. um that was completely outside of his paradigm so I definitely do come across these people, and, and I have learned how to deal with them. Just, you know, smile and, you know, allow them to have their belief systems because it, my job is not to awaken the people who are not looking for it. You know, I'm, I'm there to be there for the people who are ready and looking for answers. Um, during uh, the sessions that you've done, um How do you deal with uh, the ones that say they're ready but put up a resistance? 
I play with them. <laughs> you know, if they give me the permission, if they give me the permission to invite uh, me into their problem, and they start showing resistance within the session, uh, you know, I, I'm a very playful person. I'm very fun-hearted, and you know, you you could kind of get that about me. But you know, the ego it really, really loves playing games with with the person, you know, and so when yeah. you start playing games with the ego and start pushing buttons and you're able to kind of attack it, it's, it's almost like, like judo, yeah. you just kind of like have to weave in and out of people's perceptions and eventually they kind of get to a point where they're just sort of like, oh my God, what just happened? You know, like they're, the look that gets on their face is hilarious because, you know, they're not expecting you to be able to see through their bullshit. Yeah. So it's it's a very fun fun thing for me to do when people start getting like that. But uh yeah, I mean people can do that just in everyday life, you know, if you are you're met with resistance from somebody, you know, there are a million ways that you can approach it. But one of the ways that you don't approach it is by um you know, pointing it out point blank. You know, you kind of yeah. kind of tease it. Yeah. And so that you basically you've got to steer, try and guide away rather than force, as such. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's yeah. What's your um, position on ego and the role it plays in people being uh, up or down? Can you repeat that? What's your position on people people uh, with egos, both uh, mm -hmm. elevated egos? and how they can um, address that, because basically... You mean like, uh, like inflated? Yes. Basically, um, it's kind of masking uh, something else, is, is it not? Yeah, it's, it's, the, it's the false identity. You know, it's, it's the... There's a word for it. It's the, the idealized self-image yes. that we have. And people, oh, I used to have one of those. <laughs> it was very interesting to deal with. Uh, you know, I was 16. I was invincible. I, you know, I was anorexic. I was completely self-absorbed. And I just thought I was better than everyone, so much so more superior. And, you know, I think it's an individual process for people to have to get to because it's really hard to be humbled by someone else. But uh, people that are like that, you know, life tends to humble them, you know. Like for me, I had to pretty much lose it all and, you know, undergo a deep process of deconstruction. <laughs> and it was not pretty. So, you know, I don't tend to deal with people like that because they are people who are, they have such inflated egos that they don't see that there's a problem. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, so we've kind of yeah. dealt that with uh, a lot of that in the alternative media as such. Um, yeah. But egos have kind of uh, ran amok. And um, what they failed to see is um, that is only helping um, prolong the situation. You know, um, everybody, uh, like stressing cosmic voice you know we i received a fantastic letter praising me and drake and and neil keenan uh, uh, i'm not too sure whether you're aware of neil and the global accounts for what we do but at, mm -hmm. at the end of the day we can't do that without uh, the admins we have at, at cosmic voice and without and and the people who are members of cosmic voice and elsewhere and in getting the message out and, and it's the same mm -hmm. uh, with uh, your venture, you know, um, y you do your one-on-one, -on -one, but you're hoping that person goes out and spreads the message, and, and eventually uh, it has a, a knock-on effect. And so, it, you know, it's uh, just because someone is at the forefront of it doesn't mean that they're any more important than anybody else, and too, mu too much... Yeah. Uh, has kind of played into the egos. Uh, we were talking about Alex Jones before, you know, who's his kind of, <laughs> you know, um, 
you know, there's I people agree. who like Alex, Alex, Alex Jones served the purpose a few years back, and he, he woke, what we would say, woke some people up. But um, mm-hmm. his uh, mode of operation now is uh, more than spent, in my opinion. Um, <laughs> And, you mean uh, you don't need all of his stores? Uh, you, don't, you don't need all of his products that he sells in the store? No, uh, we don't need any of his uh, r- links to strap for either. Um, yeah. Which some of us are familiar with and some of us aren't. But, you know, he's gone mm-hmm. his way and, and that's fine for him. Um, but, uh, you know, everyone has a personal choice uh, in life which way to go. Um Nobody asks. We don't ask anyone. We just had Tanath on. She's, um, mm-hmm. uh, we have people who uh, think basically uh, Tanath's the be all and end all, and she doesn't want to hear that because it's not good. Because you, you're giving mm-hmm. your own power away. And one of the the best things Tanath ever said: um, never put anyone above your own heart. And right. uh, it doesn't matter who, uh, whether you're religious or not. You are just as important as everybody else. And when people realize that, um, whichever God you, you pray to or worship, whether it's the source, creator, Lord or whatever, they are no better than you. And that is a stage of uh, self-empowerment which you take on. We're all part of the same source as such. Good and bad, mm-hmm. uh, light and dark, and all the various religious um, constructs there is. No one's better than each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's part of this uh, pedestal illusion that people have, um, you know, and society teaches us to have that, you know, because we have the cult of the experts, we have the people who are just only taking doctor's advice and and they just kind of shun the opinions of other people. If you're not an expert, if you don't have letters after your name, if you don't yeah. have this credential and that credential, uh, you know, you're you're nobody. But also the people who are out there you know, on YouTube and, you know, they're really, really soaking it up and, you know, almost being like gurus, um, you know, that's very telling as well. I mean, I think that one of the best ways to be able to tell if somebody is really speaking the truth or not is what is it that they are telling you to do? Like, are they telling you to be empowered yourself? Are they explaining to you that they are no better than you? Are they humbling themselves? Like, or are they trying to present that idealized self-image to you? And are they trying to position themselves as being superior to you? Yes. Yes, well, doctors in particular, they, you know, there's a reason why a doctor is called practice. <laughs> you know? Yeah. All, <laughs> I know, you know it, They're basically pra- practicing on you. Um, and, you know, where you... We uh, sadly, you know, there's a lot of alternative uh, on that on that particular subject. There's a lot of alternative medicines, and people go, "Well, my doctor doesn't believe in that." And you go, "Well, what makes him different to you?" And, and the same applies mm-hmm. with politicians. That, uh, um, most of them, anyway, uh, are just normal everyday guys who who are in a position of perceived power. They don't yeah. necessarily have. Any uh, anything better, or and certainly uh, a lot of them have a lot less knowledge than the people we have uh, on our uh, listening to our show. But mm-hmm. it's al- it, there's always this um, um, incremental pyramid structure where someone's better than uh, somebody else, and that's uh, you know it's disempowerment, and it's done for a reason. And uh, the populace here has been disempowered over. Uh, Many, many millennia, shall we say, a lot longer than people realize. Very true. It's very true. And when you start being an example of empowerment, uh, you know, it, it's very common that people reject that. They're like, oh, you're crazy. Oh, my gosh. I can never yes. do that. You know, no, because well, they're not used to seeing what that looks like. Yeah. Well, you know, self. Once you attain self empowerment, you know, there's not necessarily um, that doesn't mean to say that you have to go out and um, lord over other people who haven't. All you have to do is be. 
mm-hmm. you know, uh, st- just be, you know, there's uh, no difference uh, to anything else. So, um, yeah. let me tell you, what would you describe as your expertise? Uh, belief deconstructing. And you think can that you talk just about- in a... And can you talk a bit about that, please? Well, yeah, I mean, we have all of these societal memes and beliefs that we have, we come into this world with, uh, just, you know, even being around in the culture that we exist in, uh, there are beliefs in insecurity and worthlessness in, you know, I could never do that, just so much around limitation and uh, not being able to do things. You know, you hear people that are in their 60s being like, oh, that technology stuff, I could never use that, blah, 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 you know. People set up their world in such a way where there is an infinite amount of things that they can't do and only a very small amount of things that they can do. And then within those things that they can do, those things are difficult and hard and and impossible and blah, you know. They they just, within people's language patterns and how they view themselves and how they exist within the world, I mean, they are setting up their own parameters. And I guess what I like to do with people, whether whether they pay me or not, I mean, this is just what I do because I've been doing it with myself for five years. <laughs> you know, I, yes. I question their beliefs. I help them really deconstruct them through, yeah. you know, various different methodologies just because, I mean, people are all so different. But, um, you know, it really boils down to that that sheer questioning. Like, you know, the doctor told me that I had fibromyalgia and that I was going to have to take pain medicine for the rest of my life and that I would just only get progressively worse over the years. Yet I haven't been in pain in two years and I don't take any medications at all. You know, so it's like... Yes. Where, how did that happen? That happened because I shifted my belief systems around and I made it, I, I set up my reality in such a way that that doesn't have to define me and it doesn't have to define who I am in this world. Yes, I agree okay. with that. Um, particularly uh, on the health issue. Um, I had a rather unfortunate incident with a bench saw and fingers. <laughs> And uh, I was told that I was going to lose both fingers. And uh, I said to the doctor, I don't think so. So he says, no, no, Mm -hmm. you're definitely going to lose the two fingers. And I said, I don't think so. And he said, your nail won't grow back. I said, it will. Uh, Right from the off. And uh, I've still got them. Yes, they don't look particularly pleasant, but they're still uh, adequate and I can work with them. So it's, uh, it's, again, it's reinforcing your, your own uh, empowerment and not allowing others to, to um, impose theirs on onto you. Um, and right. particularly in the, in the medical field, um, you, you know, uh, there's been lots of uh, stories of recoveries by people just being positive. And and I, I want to even challenge that a little further. It's not even so much yeah. being positive. It's it's. Um, you know, for me, I've I've found that it's it's just about removing the other stuff. You know, you don't even have to be in that super positive state that you're like super certain that it's going to happen. It's just more so like questioning the belief, like, well, why can't it happen? You know, you're kind of opening yourself to the possibilities of recovery rather than um, you know just feeling so trapped by them because. I think that a lot of the illnesses that are experienced today are are diseases of disempowerment um, and, and just people who they just think that this is the way it's going to be because somebody said so. So the real healing can occur when people start opening up their mind a little wider and and start considering the possibilities. You know, maybe they're exposed to another recovery story. You know, I didn't get through fibromyalgia being super positive. I just want to make that extremely clear. Uh, You know, it wasn't me just being like, oh, yes, I'm totally going to recover because there were a lot of days where I didn't really believe it, but I was open to the possibility of it, you know. 
Yes. And I think that that's also a flaw in the fundamentals of the New Age movement is because they make you feel like if you are not positive all the time, then you're going to create really bad stuff in your life. But yeah. <laughs> that's not true. And, you know, anyone who knows me will tell you that I am not positive all the time. Like, <laughs> that's not possible. <laughs> no, no. So, but yeah. It, uh, if... so um, where I was coming from, if you uh, set your mind to a certain task, you yeah. uh, that that comes back to you. If you are uh, right. going to continue saying, uh, uh, like you said before, uh, I've got this illness and I'm going to die and this blah 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 blah. It, it, what you put out is what you get back. And, um, exactly. Um. Have you uh, uh, right? So got some questions from uh, the, the listeners. Would you support your listeners taking health into their own hands uh, through alternative medicines? Is that your field? You know, it really, it really depends. Um, I don't honestly. I don't hold judgment on uh, the 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 what is it called the the regular medical system, there's a certain word for it, uh, versus the alternative health system. You know, I feel like both of them have their pros and cons. And, you know, through my healing journey, I used both. And I was able to, um, you know, strike a balance. But there was definitely a time when I was heavily dependent on the traditional health system. And that was not getting good. And I was also at a time when I was heavily dependent on the alternative health system, and that was no good. Hmm. So I think that really what it boils down to is, you know, listening to your own intuition because you have so many more answers inside of you than anybody else does. You know, so, like, if you feel like you need to go and seek alternative health practice, go do it. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. But if you're on medications or something like that from a regular doctor, I mean, uh, you might want to, you know, really, really consider is is it something that would be life-threatening if you went off of them? You know, I'm not recommending that anybody, you know, just blindly follow some advice. You know, they yeah. really need to take into consideration their own uh, their own situation. Yes. But when you uh, get figures like from the World Health Organization that 90 per- 90% of drugs doesn't work on 60% of the people, you can understand mm-hmm. why people are taking, uh, uh, going to back to nature, if you like, and going to the oh, alternatives. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, there's just, just as much dogma within the alternative health system as well. You know, yes, I mean, and, I just want people to be aware of that as well. <laughs> Yeah, and the uh, dodgy salesmen and corruption in, in that as well. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Uh, it's a minefield the same the same way. Um, so yeah, that's why in- intuition and discernment are important. Do you have um, anyone um, that? Uh, let me start start again. Your youth. Uh, where what? How would you describe yourself? Would you say you were anti-authority? Um, you were against the world, so to speak? When I was younger? Yes. Um, I had a bit of that touch in me, but I was never very outward about it because I've always been very introverted. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I always kind of took out my rage on the page because I'm an artist. So, I mean, whenever I would be very frustrated with something, I would just, you know, draw pictures about it or or write poems about it or something. But, um, you know, I've always felt like the best way to kind of deal with the system is just sort of kind of transcend the system. So, therefore, I live in Costa Rica and I don't really, like, deal with the United States very much (laughs) because I just don't live there. (laughs) And, um, you know, it's funny because I'm going back in, in October uh, for a period of time and you know it'll be very interesting for me to see how I kind of interface with that society but uh, it's just um, 
I don't, I'm not belligerent to police officers or anything like if that's what you're meaning, because they're just no. people too, you know, they're, yeah. they're people who have families and they're confused. They don't really know who to listen to. They're, they're just taking orders and trying to keep a job to feed families, you know? Um, being in Costa Rica, it's, it's, um, I've never been, but I've seen videos and stuff and it's kind of, or large parts of the island is like being uh, back to nature as such and not in um, massive urban cities that the U.S. Mm -hmm. has. It, yeah. uh, um, do you t detect a different energy there and that has helped you in your recovery? Um, I was mostly recovered. Uh, I've only lived here for about a year, so I just kind of came down because I wanted to ex escape the Portland winter, <laughs> uh. you know. So, I mean, in, in terms of mental shifts, uh, I made a lot of those while I was still in the state, so I don't want anybody to get the notion that you have to, like, go run off to a foreign country to, you know, get the benefits that I'm talking about. But, you know, there is definitely a cultural perspective shift when you come and live within another culture and just see how they behave. Like, they don't actually have an army here in Costa Rica. They don't have standing army, and the police officers largely don't do anything. So it's very much so like being in the wild, wild west, you know. So it's like if you want to go kill somebody, you know, nobody's really going to go find out. So <laughs> it's really a very interesting uh, place to be. In the yes. sense that, you know, there's really no law enforcement here. And I guess part of me likes that because, I mean, you know, when you're driving down the roads in the United States, like you're always paranoid that there's going to be a cop behind you or something. Like he's you know, yes. waiting to pull you over. But, you know, here you don't really get that. So, uh, but with that, there's also just a lot more recklessness and just crazy people. But um, in terms of energy shifts, uh, yeah, I mean, I live on top of a mountain and I drink clean spring water and I go to farmer's markets and get, you know, natural food grown by poor farmers and, you know, it's just, it's an, it's an interesting uh, life experience, but I don't think that when I go back to the United States, it's going to change much because uh, when you, when you do those internal changes, it doesn't really matter where you are in the world, uh, you know, that you are with you everywhere you go. Yes. yes. Well, uh, you know, it's a massive change of culture for me coming from uh, the UK to here 12 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, it's been a big learning curve. I didn't expect. Um, yeah, I bet. <laughs> didn't, I didn't expect to be doing what I'm doing now. Um, it's uh, quite a change. But uh, I personally, uh, myself, I have a, a lot of knowledge both on the... Uh, the ET side which we covered before and also on all the banking and the government fraud and all this so um, mm -hmm. I thought I would put it to good use and uh, everyone uh, should find uh, part of the uh, your own uh, empowerment is people should find what, what they're best at and what they like yeah. to do you sound like uh, you enjoy what you do and uh, I certainly do Oh uh, yeah, I mean, definitely. I think that is definitely a lot of it, because you know, y you you find all these people who are just, you know, working a job or something because they they have to, and they're really putting the things that they're really good at aside, and their passions and and all the things that really spark their souls and make them feel alive. They, that takes a back seat because you know they're they're so busy trying to keep up an American lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, there's a lot of different ways to navigate around that, but, you know, I think one of the most important things when you're on a journey of self-empowerment is empowering yourself by enjoying the activities that you do. You know, like, if you, if you like knitting, go knit. If you like, you know, helping and volunteering in hospitals, go do that. You know, make time in your schedule for stuff like that, because... It's really important because the more yeah. that you're feeling alive and inspired and happy with whatever it is that you're doing, uh, you know, that's contagious and you start to help other people feel yes. alive and inspired as well. Um, what is your take on meditation? Do you do it and how long 
and how frequent if you do? <sighs> Meditation. <laughs> Mm -hmm. such a confusing subject for a lot of people. Yes. I think that a lot of people think that meditation is something that you just need to do, like, and sit on a zafu and sit there and chant your ohms and stuff like that. But uh, my approach to meditation is just, like, it, it's very different. You know, I, I meditate when I'm doing stuff. Like, I meditate when I'm painting. I meditate when I am walking in the yard. I meditate when I'm washing dishes. I, I call it wash dish yoga. <laughs> but no, seriously, like I love feeling yes. the water on my hands and the soap between my fingers. And, you know, it's just, it's a really wonderful feeling. And for me, I think it's a lot more practical because I, I have a busy life, you know, I, I, yes. it's, it's a lot of time to sit down and just do nothing for an hour. I mean, sometimes it's necessary, but I think the best thing that people can really do as far as meditation goes is to learn how to still your mind when you're on the go. Like, so when you're driving a car, you know, feel the steering wheel underneath your fingertips or feel the breeze as it's hitting your cheek or, you know, feel your toes inside of your shoes. You know, these, these uh, anchors really anchor your attention and your awareness into the present moment, and it only takes just a couple minutes. Or take yes. some deep breaths while you're sitting there in traffic. I mean, these, this is like, you know, the toolkit of meditation. Like, you don't really need to go devote a bunch of time to it, but you're so able and ready to use it whenever you're really needing for it. You can just reach for it. These yes. little tools. I, yeah, I um, that that's kind of along the lines the way uh, I do. You know, I don't mm -hmm. uh, have the time to sit there for an hour. Um, all the, you know, it's just uh, if I can. I started off uh, with, uh, you know, going on YouTube's and you say oh, you do 45 minutes for an hour. I never did the chanting, but I found mm -hmm. uh, the more I did it, the less I needed, and I can almost go into like a meditative state or a trance-like state. Uh, within a minute, yeah. you know, it's you, you were right in what you're saying. It's it's uh, making the mind still, and then using uh, I mean, the rest. Of it. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely like a benefit to doing longer meditations. Um, you know, two years ago, I did one of those Vipassana meditation retreats where I was like a silent retreat for ten days. And, you know, I didn't talk, and I meditated for 10 hours a day, like, sitting cross-legged on a Zafu, you know, like, and, you know, that was, I know, I've done some pretty weird things, but, like, it was, it was cool, because, you know, you, I got really intimate with my own mind, and, yeah. you know, for people who are just starting to awaken and getting into the self-empowerment thing, like, I think that longer meditations are kind of important, uh, because you're not trained to allow yourself to get quiet that quickly. You know, for people like you and me who have been doing this for a while, I mean, those little handy-dandy meditations where we can just do them while we're on the go is very useful because yeah. we don't have the constant broadcasting in our mind of, oh, you're a piece of shit, you're worthless, you know, look yeah. at you trying to meditate, blah, 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 you know, all of the voices that are coming up. Yeah. And so when people are new at it, it's good to try to get them to do it for longer periods of time yes. or even 20 minutes yes. um, because they're not as familiar with their own mind and they don't really know when their mind is actually quiet. No. that's uh, We have uh, a couple of people who are close to me on uh, Cosmic Voice and they have uh, great difficulty in uh, quieting the, the mind, I said, "Well, you know, once that's the key to it all. However, where, where you want to sit, and if you want to chant, if you want to put binaural beats on, or some of the solfeggio codes yeah. and all that stuff, yeah. just quieten the mind and then relax. You know, and see where it takes you. Yeah. yeah. Have you been involved in or met any like shaman types? Uh, yes, actually. Um, I lived in, <laughs> it, 
it was kind of funny. Um, I was looking for uh, woofing, you know, like working on the organic farm. Yes. Uh, I was looking for that uh, back in 2012, and I came across a woman's site, and she was all about uh, deconstructing, you know, your, your internal belief systems. And, you know, I had been listening to uh, the work of Byron Katie for a little while, and I was like, oh, this sounds interesting. And little did I know, she's actually a shaman. And uh, so I, I did a, a bit of a apprenticeship with her for a few months when I was in Hawaii. And that was a very, very interesting experience. And um, I, I really I highly benefited from that. Oh, sounds good. We had um, the king of, of Hawaii on the show recently. Uh, they're obtaining, oh, wow. um, they're um, going back to a sovereign nation, and stepping outside the, yeah. the U.S. And this um, Mr. Edmund Silver is the, the descendant of the last queen before the U.S. and the U.K., I might add, decided uh, to claim uh, <laughs> the island for themselves as they, as they have done over mm-hmm. hundreds of years. So that was a yeah. very interesting experience. Um We've got about five minutes. I'll leave you to speak with whatever way you want to go with the last five minutes. And uh, we'll see how it goes from there. Anything you would like um, to bring up? uh, I think I've said all the things that are really kind of crucially important. Um, If there's anybody that has any questions, they can definitely ask. Um... I'm willing to answer questions, or if you have any more questions, Thomas, I'm willing to answer them. Uh, let me just see if there's an ending uh, here. Um, one of the questions is, uh, it's a bit off the wall, uh, you, keep, you, uh, you kept mentioning a person called Dave. Uh, who is he, and is he your business partner, or is that your husband? Someone that you wanted to know. Oh, no, no. <laughs> he's, not my, he's not my husband. Uh, Dave is my best friend in the whole world. He's a person that you met me through. Uh, yeah. He's on Cosmic Voice. His name's Dave Kelso. I synchronistically met him via YouTube a couple years back, and you know we've hung out in person quite a few times. And I speak to him very often, and he's been my awakening buddy. I would I would call it, you know, <laughs> not so much a business partner, but just a, a dear friend that has helped me. Uh, do a lot of these shifts because I think it's more powerful if you can have somebody by your side helping you, guide you through your bullshit, you know? Yes. It's it's a lot easier when you have somebody outside of you calling you on your bullshit and you trust them and you love them and they know, you know that they have your best interests at heart. Yes, I agree. Do you have uh, a website? I do. Uh, it is KaterinaEdwards.com, K-A-T-E-R-I-N-A-E-D-W-A-R-D-S.com. And uh, I keep an active blog if people want to follow uh, the videos that I do, post them there. And I also have a newsletter where I send them out every week. And I just give people loads of tips and advice on how to be themselves to the fullest in a world that's constantly telling them not to be. So, you know, yes. it, it's, a, it's a lot of fun. It's, uh, yes, it is. Do you f- find you have to... Um, do, uh, we have... Um, so we had Tanath on. Uh, she talks about uh, shielding and grounding and centering. Uh, is that something you partake mm-hmm. in? Because uh, the, the, the danger we're of meeting with people um, and interacting with people who are kind of um, with the inner demons is you're t- also taking on their energy as such. Do you have your own uh, uh, defense mechanisms for that? Uh, yes, actually. Uh, I have a friend who taught me this this uh, notion that's called spiritual Teflon. And I just kind of like imagine myself sort of enwrapped in Teflon, you know, when I'm going into a situation <laughs> that is a little difficult. Um, you know, in terms of grounding and centering, it's just mainly those practices that I was telling you about, you know, just kind of yeah. feeling my own body here 
in the, this moment in this room. Uh, and also just allowing myself to breathe and to allow myself to feel the feelings that I'm feeling because that's a, a lot of the reason why people feel off-center is because they have emotions circulating in them that, that they don't know what to do with. And, you know, some of the best things for you to do is just allow the feeling to come up. Like if you're feeling anxious, feel the anxiety, feel your heart pounding, feel your hands twitching and sweating, you know, and and allow yourself to detach from any story that that means it's bad, you know, because sometimes it's just a physiological response that needs to, to move through you. All right, we've kind of pretty much run out of time. We've got a couple of minutes left for the music. Um, I'd like to thank you very much for coming on. Uh, I enjoyed that, and from what I gather from the members, so did they. Uh, would you like I'm to so say glad. anything? Um, would you like to say anything finally to our, to the listeners? Yeah, I just I really want to encourage people to continue to seek to be themselves no matter what. And even when it gets kind of hard and challenging and tricky and you have people telling you that you're crazy or weird or whatever, you know, it's okay. It's a sign that you're on the right path. Yes, I agree. Right, thank you very much for that, Katrina. And hopefully uh, maybe one day we'll, you can come back on again. Uh, uh, I would love very that. Interesting. Thank you. Right, you're we'll welcome. be back um, next Wednesday. Not Thursday, next Wednesday um, at 8 p.m. Uh, with the normal um, ground uh, show. No ET show next Wednesday. Um, uh, hopefully we may have uh, Mr. Keenan on again. If not, it will just be Drake and I. Me and Drake may also, uh, I'll also make you aware, maybe uh, there's a possibility we may be on the P and N talk show again on Monday, depending on uh, certain information uh, becoming available in the next 24 to 36 hours. We'll see. Right, my name's Thomas Williams. Uh, I hope you enjoyed Ray and Katharina this evening. We'll be back next Wednesday. Bye for now.